Okay, let's start. So the whole city is full of posters of your face. We have I one noticed. behind you. It's on the, the magazine and the catalog. And your maternal grandmother was Swedish mm -hmm. or half Danish, half Swedish, I think. My maternal grandmother was herself Swedish, but her, her mother was, her family was Danish. Okay. Originally. So, of course, we think of you as a Swedish <laughs> So do I. Actress. But w what role does Sweden play in your life? Well, I guess, you know, being, uh, being raised by a Swedish mother, that was very much just the atmosphere of my upbringing, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, I imagine for myself that if I, uh, if I don't know, if I was married and had a child in Saudi Arabia, I don't know if I would consider my own child Saudi, you mm. know? Um, it's sort of natural, isn't it? Mm. So, um, actually, I, I like to joke that um, I didn't really understand that I was American until I was around 15. <laughs> because for my mother, uh, whenever you were badly behaved, the insult for you was you were behaving like an American. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, it took me a little while to sort of realize that she had sort of, she was a little off base. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but so I've had a strong influence from both. Mm. Just, yeah. just through, of course, my, my childhood. Mm. And y you've been here before? I have been here before. Yeah. I've, been, I've, been, I've been south, and I've been here, and I've been out into the water. Okay. But not, not enough. I haven't canvassed the entire country. But mm. I've been where my mother was from, which is near Malmo, mm. um, and uh, where my grandmother was, grew up. And that's where my, my grandparents lived. Okay. And now, of course, you're here to receive the Achievement Award at the Stockholm Film Festival. And and it's taking place, the, the award ceremony tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, at Park. Uh, how do you feel about this? I'm very honored. I'm very, very honored. Um, I'm very touched. Uh, it's very nice to come here um, to bring my mother back home. And oh, see she's accompanying you. She is accompanying oh, me okay. and um, seeing relatives. And I think another interesting thing for me is, you know, having grown up in Massachusetts, mm -hmm with my mother, you know, there was no extended family. You know, there was no presence of, uh, my, well, my grandmother passed away when I was around three. Um, and with the exception of my mother's one brother, you know, she had, she was living in a world with no family. Mm. Um, and to come here and get to meet uh, my cousins and, uh, and she has her sister here and, and uh, th th it's, it's really very, uh, it's very sweet. Mm. So this year's festival is dedicated to Lauren Bacall, mm -hmm. and she was here 14 years ago to, to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. And mm -hmm. for me, it seem, it feels like you're just as big a star. You're oh. like the Lauren Bacall of today. <laughs> so so w which uh, actors have been your? She's a great lady, Betty Bacall. Mm -hmm. And and which uh, actors have been your inspirations for your career? Well, many, many, many. Lauren Bacall was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I actually had the privilege of, of knowing her. And she was as, as witty in life as she was uh, in her performances. Mm. Really, really witty lady. I actually went to a friend of mine's many years ago. A very close friend of ours had a um, birthday party. And it was at uh, La Grand Ouille in New York, which is a nice French restaurant. And there was three or four round tables. And I was sitting at one with with Lauren Bacall and my girlfriend, uh, Natasha Richardson. She, may she rest in peace mm -hmm. also. And um, I looked around the table, and, and they were all women. And I said, oh, look, th there are no men here. And Lauren Bacall said, just like life. <laughs> 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 just like in life, honey. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my memories of her uh, were, uh, were very sweet. Mm -hmm. She's a very, very witty woman. Let's open up for some uh, questions from the journalist person. You can just let's start. And uh, please state your name and uh, what you're writing for. My name is Jonathan, and I write for Watch the Watch. Okay. Um, I read that uh, you think it's very traumatic when you uh, give birth to your first child. Yes. I think more it was a great time to feel a sense of new focus. Um, I think sometimes when you get caught up in the grind of it all, you know, do this, do that, you know, you can easily sometimes maybe lose your way, you know, sometimes. And um, 
and also sometimes just get tired. Um, you know, and I, I feel that uh, the time spent away from acting is the time spent in life, and the time spent in life um, refuels you, you know, in a really nice way. Um, and for me, it's been a great reminder. I mean, I love being at home, and uh, but I, I get it's it's pleasant to be reminded of how much I love my work, and it's such a privilege to get to love your work. Um, so it was kind of an invaluable time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the question was, um, uh, do you look differently on which kind of parts you accept now when you have this distance? Well. Definitely in that I, I, I really want to do, I, I feel very fueled up to do some, very st to do some strong work. Mm. Um, and um, I've just started something that I'm very excited about. Can you tell us more? Um, yes, it's based on a, a book um, and it was turned into an Australian miniseries that I know showed here. It's called The Slap okay. in English. Um, and it's a really interesting drama. So there's an American remake. There, uh, yes. Th there, there's going to be a TV drama. It will be on television mm. in America um, on NBC. Mm. I'm sure it will show here. Mm. Um, but it's an eight-part series of a sort of character study of a group of, of friends and acquaintances of what happens to this group when one person at a party loses their temper and slaps the child of another person. Mm. And what the kind of catastrophic effects of this single slap are on the lives of all of these adults and children and, 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 and how this sort of, this act um, rips, uh, rips a passage or, I don't know, cuts through like a chainsaw these ties that bond these people. Mm. Can you maybe say a little bit about your own character? Remember? Um, and so I play a character called Anouk, and she's a woman. She's one of the only friends who is childless, um, by choice, and a little bit captivated in her own youth still, um, slightly arrested, um, not because she has no children, just that the character is a little bit like that, and um, and it's her own sort of journey in relationship to her friends. Okay, and it was written by um, the wonderful American playwright John Robin Bates who is probably one of the best playwrights we have working today. So it's very, um, it's, it's very cinematic um, and psychologically interesting. And that's surely right then? Yes, yeah. literally. I was shooting yesterday. Okay. <laughs> and I will be shooting Monday. <laughs> okay. But I couldn't miss coming here. So. No, you're so welcome. Okay. Uh, yes? Yeah. Uh, I heard you also just like to thank you. Just a little bit. It's, you know, a yeah. few airplanes. And, <laughs> and you truly are a warrior, and you've been very open about the tough years in your life. And as the character Not that open. <laughs> <laughs> compared to some others. Yeah. Um, but after that you had your third child, that was a pretty tough period for you, I've heard. Well, yeah, I, I definitely, it was d difficult. Yeah. What happened? Well, it's just, you know, in fact, that happens to women sometimes, you know, some, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not, and this one wasn't. My first two children, actually, was very uh, easy. I was, I had no idea what it would be like. You know, you hear some women, they don't feel well and they, when, they're, when they're pregnant, and I had no idea what that was like. Now I do. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. So, but the results turned into a beautiful eight and a half pound baby, so. Yeah. Um, I, I have to be grateful. What was that time like? Well, it was, it was, n it was awful. Ask any woman with a tough pregnancy. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't need the gory details, and they are gory. Yeah. I'm not thinking about <laughs> that, but like this time after? And well, it took some, it took some getting, I, I started to feel better afterwards, but it took some time. Mm -hmm. Let, let's go on. So, more questions? Please. I have a very quick collection from Helen's on the film. I'd like to ask you about things that happened uh, 20 years ago. The scene in Pulp Fiction where you got with John, John, John Travolta mm -hmm. is an iconic cinema picture nowadays. Yes. How it was when you made the scene? Did it 
I'm referring to the dancing scene. Oh, yeah. it was yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I, I've had the privilege of dancing with John Travolta twice. Um, one time iconically and one time just for fun in another <laughs> movie. Um, but uh, no, it was really special, you know. Um, at that point, I had been working for a while since I started acting as a teenager. But um, it was just a really wonderful moment, you know. Quentin Tarantino as a director at the time was really, you know, becoming himself and he was so exuberant. And um, he and Travolta, you know, sort of uh, choreographed the dance together. And um, uh, it was really special, you know. I mean, it's sort of a famous story, but Quentin was shooting some of it himself. And then he couldn't help but to dance <laughs> along. So the camera was dancing with the actors. But, um, and that film actually, I think, was here at the Stockholm Film Festival. Yes, and Quentin and has won, been here twice. And won the, the uh, bronze horse. Did it? Yeah, it. I have it. Yeah. I oh, ha he have gave it to me. Oh, you have the horse. Yes, I do. He gave the me heaviest well, he prize won twice. in the film world. I think he won twice, so yeah. he had a, he had an extra one. Yeah, yeah. it was very generous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he had a good time here. I guess he's been talking a lot of good yes. stuff about the Stockholm Film Festival. Yes, well, it's festivals like this that uh, are so important for the film industry. You know, the really to create energy and attention to more serious films, mm. and hopefully less serious ones sometimes. Um, both of, I have equal affection for both. But um, you know, it, without festivals, the, you know, the, the, the platform for serious filmmaking, international filmmaking mm -hmm. would be so, so weak. Mm -hmm. So it's so essential that you know, as film journalists and, and critics um, and actors and mm. festival, Fest uh, what should we call festival people? Um, festivales, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's sort of basically keeping a pulse of the film industry going. Okay. No, I mean, I do know a little, but I wouldn't want to embarrass my mother by saying <laughs> it. I, I, you know, it's terrible that. Uh, my mother only spoke English to all of us. And she, was a, she is a person who grew up with a number of languages. She spoke German, she spoke Swedish, she spoke a bit of Chinese. She lived in um, China in her early, early years before they could get home to Sweden. She was born in 1941, which was a terribly difficult time to be born. Mm. And um, they were stuck away from Sweden in China, actually, um, trying to get back to Sweden at the end of the war. So. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of that trauma or something. She, uh, she stuck to English. Mm. But she, she is fluent in Swedish still and she's yeah, talking yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah she's do you feel left out if she's talking to her sister or someone? I feel left out when any, whenever I'm around anyone that I can't speak their language because I love to communicate. But um, there's time, there's time. I will spend more time here. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. still learn. It's not too late. It's not too late. They say statistically it's too late for my brain, but where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, <laughs> and at least they're quite close to each other. Like yes. So you have another question? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, my name is Lina Schellner from Filmatum uh, I wonder what part of the character are you most uh, proud of? Oh, which character yes. that I ever played? I don't know. Um, you know, someone like me who's been acting more of their life than they were alive beforehand, mm -hmm. almost twice as long, it's hard to say. But, um, I mean, there's quite a few. So I don't really have any particular favorite, no. So with such a long career and um, such great parts, do you have something to say about the, the female characters that are being written today in Hollywood? Do you think it's... It's a, it is a question people very often ask. Yeah. I don't really know. I, I, I know when I'm sort of spoiled when I get... I only see the good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, of course, I think more of a concern is how squeezed the film industry is, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's wonderful that te television as a medium has blossomed into this great... Um, platform, but uh, I do love movies, and mm. uh, you know, t t moving forward, wondering how how uh, 
how we will continue to have mm. such a great number of vibrant mm. films and made. So, yeah, there is a brain pain to David it on for sure going on. Yeah, it's just uh, it's a challenging. It's challenging. Mm. Uh, I'm David from the newspaper. Hello, so David. Did you have a small family gathering yesterday night? Yes. Yeah, how was that? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess. It was good. It, it was good. My mother destroyed an entire battalion of Kreftor. <laughs> um, she, she, she just wiped them out completely, um, which was a pleasure to see. Um, but no one else could believe the amount of Kreftor that she was able to consume. I mean, she was trying to make up for many lost years in one, in one sitting. <laughs> so it was very, very And did nice. you have some? Of course. Yep. And but I refuse. I refuse. No, I don't. No. I, I, she's beheading these things, and me. I, you know, I was. No, I had. A, I was very American about it. You know, <laughs> arms and tail. Um, but but I was impressed with her, uh, with her adventurousness. Okay, you have one more. I forgot to introduce myself last time. Maria, coming from the biggest news morning show here in Hello. I visited your grandmother's statue in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did. Time ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? I think it's beautiful. Um, I went there myself, uh, and, and uh, just privately, a number of years ago. Um, it's very, very, it's very beautiful. It used to be out in the harbor, apparently, but I guess when they dredged the harbor and made it a deep, for deep, deep hulls, they moved her. Now she's in a very small, sort of fisherman's boat yard. Yeah, looking out. It's out yeah, it's a very somewhere I have it. Uh, picture of me with it. I, I, I would like to, I was actually going to go south this trip and spend quite a bit of time, but then of course work comes up and mm -hmm. at the moment I have to start taking work seriously. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but I will go back. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very, she, I didn't know her sadly because she mm -hmm. passed away when I was only three. Mm -hmm. um, so for me it's, it's quite amazing to see a three-dimensional version of her. And it's funny because I've heard that American journalists are still <coughs> calling the people around it. Is it true? Is it really your daughter's grandmother? Um, apparently it is, although um, several of her, of, of my third cousins, so children of her siblings, try to say it's not just her, it's also this one, it's also this one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but apparently it is her, yeah. yeah my mother has a miniature of it. She's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last question then. Maybe if someone, yes, yes, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Sofia. I'm coming from the celebrity magazine, Hem till veckan. Mm -hmm. So if you would describe or give us a few words of your feelings right now, like how do you feel? I feel very How's good. Your, very good, yeah, but about tonight, about being here. Oh, I'm, I, I'm having a wonderful time. I'm having a wonderful time. I wish I could stay longer. Um, but I will be back. Um, no, it's really nice. I, I, I don't know quite what to expect. Um, no, like, uh, how long are you here for? I have to work on Monday. Okay. So unfortunately, I have to uh, go back on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But um, I, was, I was supposed to stay longer. But I will be back. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. This poor gentleman had a question he's trying to okay, ask. Okay, let's, let's take these two and then... Yeah. Okay. That's a big question. Um, too many, probably. It's, a, it's uh, I think that's unfortunately. I wish I could give you one answer, but no, I'm 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 very intrigued. Um, I I know I find it a very uh, be beautiful and civilized place. Um, and one that I just want to spend more time in. Um, I think I, I, I would need to take longer to answer that question. Yes? I know you were trying to ask a question yeah. too. Yeah, my name is Ingrid for Google magazine. And uh, I know you've been doing modeling as well. Mm. Uh, and I anyway. Right now. <laughs> yeah. And I was wondering if you know the difference between acting and modeling, like where they come from inside. Well, it's incomparable. Well, you're in front of the camera, you're just taking a picture. Yeah. It's nothing much to do with acting. Mm -hmm. And the last question over there. Okay. Um, 
I'm Monica Castro from uh, 24 Minutes HD. I wonder, um, because if you see a uh, whole picture and also figure, this is something like a dance in there. It's a very iconic, like you was saying to you. So is there is something in particular that you pick up when you read the lines of your movie and you say, yes, I like this movie and I want this movie? This yes. Um, no, in general, it's a screenplay. Um, in some cases, it's a director. But you, usually, even if you're very intrigued by a director, you need to have, I mean, sometimes I've done something just because I like the actor or just because I like the director. Um, but most often, it's the screenplay has to have something that I can just start to picture it. It just goes sort of right in, it, go, it starts to stimulate my imagination. Um, just as much as you can read something and, and think it's interesting, but not be able to visualize it. So it's not, doesn't make sense. So I guess it's, it's, just a, it's just a creative spark. And does it come true as well as you imagine? Nothing ever is like you imagined, is it? Um, everything's always slightly different. And most of life is learning how to appreciate that, how, how, how to accept those differences. Um, so no, nothing is ever quite like you imagine it.